Welcome, everyone. Again, let's talk about politics and governance. So the European Union helps countries recover from setbacks with a special fund called Recovery and Resilience Facility. But the National Recovery and, Faci and Resilience Facility plans must prioritize green goals like well, clean energy. And I have invited uh, Mathilde Charon um, to talk about us, to explore this topic. And Mathilde uh, suggests, as we'll see, that this approach gets everyone, every agent working better together, especially towards uh, green goals. So as Mathilde will show, the recovery and resilience facility might be, well, maybe a new way for the European Union to work together and recover in a way that benefits the environment too. Mathilde, welcome to our episode. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I am very happy to uh, discuss this with you today. Sure. So Mathilde, let's start. What prompted you to explore the recovery and resilience facility and, well, its coordination with member states? Uh, thank you for this question. Um, to me, uh, this is a very fascinating topic because on one end, I've worked on new economic governance um, since my uh, PhD, uh, but also specifically uh, because of the governance innovation and the large scale of resources that are mobilized by uh, the recovery um, and resilience facility and the uh, national plans that are supported by it. And in this, there is a specific dimension that uh, caught my interest, which is economic coordination, uh, as this has been a challenge uh, for EU economic governance uh, so far. And uh, this uh, begs the question of the extent to which uh, we could improve on this uh, through uh, the uh, RRF. All right, so let's jump into the most important findings, so the most important conclusions uh, of your study. Uh, so the way I uh, try to uh, see if uh, we can uh, see some at least preliminary evidence of improved economic co coordination uh, in the national recovery and resilience plans is by comparing priorities uh, uh, across the plans, um, the national policy and political agenda to party manifestos of the government that uh, uh, submitted the plans, and uh, country-specific recommendations that are uh, those uh, reform priorities that are set, set forth by the European Commission for uh, the uh, member states. And uh, as, as you mentioned, leveraging the priorities, the uh, policy priorities across the plans uh, that are uh, the um, referred to the green domain, uh, the digital domain and the social domain, I can uh, look at the extent to which the ranking of prioritization and the saliences of this topic are uh, correlate, correlated prior, predominantly uh, with national priorities or uh, to an extent uh, with um, the uh, country-specific recommendations. And what I find is that uh, while countries um, in, in their national and in, in the party manifestos uh, prioritize in general social uh, priorities over greens followed by digital, um, in uh, and the CSRs are, are mixed as normal uh, as, as countries are different in, ter in terms of their uh, reform needs, uh, we see two models in the uh, NRPs, uh, one that does put uh, social priorities uh, first or as the most prevalent, uh, followed by green, but another very interesting model uh, shows that uh, the space given to green topics uh, is uh, actually uh, the uh, largest one. Uh, followed by uh, social priorities. And what is quite interesting is that countries, that there is a correlation between the um, share of CSRs that country received and the extent to which they, they do uh, display this model of prioritizing uh, the green dimension uh, over in a way or uh, together with uh, social um, uh, priorities in, in their plans. Mm -hmm. You you mentioned that, let's follow up on the policy section. So you mentioned this uh, green uh, angle between social and digital. So let us know more about policy implications of this. I mean, the, the first implication uh, is that uh, in a way we can see uh, that the uh, this new innovation in terms of governance of pairing uh, in resources and support for investment and, uh, uh, and, and reforms uh, that brings together uh, a funding for for this uh, for this uh, agenda and and conditionality 
has been successful in uh, greening uh, the, uh, the recovery. And that means that in terms of economic coordination, this may not necessarily apply to uh, all policy areas in the same way. And then the green area, as was mentioned before, is, is some that has received uh, uh, quite a lot of attention also uh, beyond the uh, RRF. Um, is 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 indeed uh, a possibility that uh, that can be uh, done uh, quite uh, effectively uh, with uh, this uh, this framework, uh, meaning that uh, this could be a lesson learned in a way from the uh, the pandemic and the uh, very uh, time pressure response that we uh, put forward uh, in the pandemic and inform our um, our, co our economic coordination beyond this uh, this time of crisis. Mm -hmm. Um, I read your article and, well, the study, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it analyzes plans, not actual implementation. So should uh, future research focus on implementation now or some other areas? Uh, this uh, is, is indeed uh, a, a very important point. Uh, I I tried to uh, define what we uh, what I do in, in, in the article as assessing the recovery agendas in a way. Uh, so this more generally would be indeed uh, looking at the policy agenda stage and not uh, at the implementation for, mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons, including the fact that these, uh, these plans are clearly still being uh, implemented at the time. Uh, and so th th this is definitely one uh, one avenue that, uh, that should be further pursued, seeing if this uh, prioritization then is actually uh, carried out in, in, in practice in the uh, downstream in the policy cycle. Uh, and also something that I uh, that we could further look into uh, relates to geographical differences. As uh, this is something that already uh, emerged to to an extent uh, when uh, when looking um, when in, in doing this analysis that some of the overall patterns may be uh, driven uh, predominantly by uh, southern member states. And so this is uh, another area that uh, should be uh, further pursued. Perfect. Some tips for future research. Mm -hmm. Mathilde, you, uh, you mentioned these early stages of this plan. So did you find in your study, well, anything particularly intriguing or worthy of a reflection after conducting the study? As, for example, I was surprised by this unexpected effectiveness of the uh, RRF in promoting green policy. So what, what are your thoughts after conducting the study? I mean, I, 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 this is definitely an interesting element, uh, but I wouldn't uh, call it uh, extremely unexpected uh, <laughs> as uh, some, some other research that has focused only on the green domain or on, on some uh, specific member state uh, had, had already uh, indicated that indeed uh, uh, this element of, uh, of, of conditionality and national ownership can be uh, quite effective in some circumstances. Uh, one thing that I, in a way, uh, did expect and, and, and was not necessarily uh, um, confirmed is that uh, we could uh, see uh, quite an important dis difference uh, in the uh, effectiveness of, of plans, uh, of, of this governance framework, depending on the size of the plans. So the reasoning would be that conditionality, if uh, there are uh, a lot of resources at stake, could be uh, more of a priority, both from the EU perspective in looking more closely at these plans, but also from the member states that have more resources to lose out if, if they don't, uh, in a way, comply comply with these. And, and these uh, could uh, be... Um, a, a element that uh, is quite interesting uh, to look uh, further into. Uh, and the other surprise in a way is that uh, the green dimension as uh, the backing of uh, a very stringent conditionality, which uh, is a minimum amount of allocation that are to be devoted uh, to this policy area. And this could uh, be uh, quite indicative of of what of, of, of the, one of the reasons that uh, these the member states actually uh, do uh, give space to uh, green priorities. But this is also the case for digital uh, priorities as well, and we don't see the same the same kind of uh, effectiveness in a way of uh, bringing digital priorities forward. So mm -hmm. this is also uh, in a way quite interesting. Okay. Good. Um, we have, well, we have a great episode at hand, but Mathilde, to uh, close in a, in a good, good way, if you had to sum up the episode in one or two sentences, so the punchline, what would it be? 
we can say that uh, one of the um, the achievement of uh, of the RF and the NRFPs has uh, in, indeed been that of be, being uh, uh, of bringing green priorities to uh, the forefront of uh, the uh, recovery. And in the second, let's say, as natural that we can uh, uh, take away from this is that the governance innovations uh, that were uh, included in the RRF would uh, be uh, key in uh, pairing resources with uh, uh, that we can um, that member states can can use to invest and reform with common goals uh, such as uh, indeed was the case uh, uh, with the NRPs. Perfect, Matteo. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. So to all of those who are watching us on YouTube, you can find all the resources, all the materials, the study that uh, this conversation was based on, our Twitter accounts, the newsletter to follow uh, next episodes of Let's Talk About Politics and Governance. You can find all that in the subscription. We invite you to go there and, well, read the article and follow up um, on this conversation.